chapter 38. And I want to uh, talk tonight um, from the thought that God's power, God has power to uh, change or alter outcomes. God has the power uh, to change or alter um, outcomes. Um, Isaiah chapter um, 38, um, the Bible says this, reading it, uh, starting in verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah was sitting near death, and Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Abel, went uh, to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed to the Lord and said, Remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth and the Lord of heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Go tell Hezekiah, you thus said the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Surely I will add uh, to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this is the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow of the sundown, which has gone down with the sun on the sundown of Ahaz, 10 degrees backwards, so that the sun return 10 degrees <coughs> on the dial by which it has gone down. This is the writing of Hezekiah, the king of Judah, which he had been sick and had recovered from his sickness. God has the power to change and or alter outcomes. First of all, I think it's important that we need to embrace the fact that God can do anything. As a believer, that ought to be uh, our testimony. He has brought us out of some things. He has done uh, some great things for us. That that ought to be our testimony. If we were uh, asked the question, what can God do? You ought to be able to, with the most assurance that you have in your mind, that my God can do anything. And so we understand that God can do anything. We talk about God has the power uh, to change an outcome or to alter an outcome. It should not catch us by surprise because if we have embraced the thought that he can do anything, changing or altering an outcome is not too hard for them. That there's nothing too hard uh, for my God to do. And so when we look at this text, I've heard Deacon Ray, I've heard this text preached. I've heard this text um, uh, taught a thousand times, and God showed me something uh, even about an hour ago uh, that I heard in the songs. We've listened to quartet songs, and I'm going to show you in a minute um, that sometimes you, if you don't know the words of the Lord, you will bop your head to something that is theologically incorrect because you have to read it to know without a doubt that the word what the word of God actually says. And so um, when we look at Isaiah 38, at this point, Hezekiah is in a bad place. Uh, Hezekiah is in uh, a bad place. Um, physically, Hezekiah is in a bad place. Um, dealing with his health, it's believed that Hezekiah had suffered a boil. Uh, and this boil had become infected, and the infection had spread uh, throughout Hezekiah's body. Um, those of you like myself, and, and I want to again uh, give God all of the praise and glory because um, the 18th was yesterday, and um, I celebrated seven years since I had the transplant. But when we were dealing with you, uh, those of you that have been sick, uh, when you have gotten um, sick, All right. listen to me good. I'm not just talking about uh, standing outside and the breeze hitting the top of your head a couple of times and you start sniffling. I'm talking about sick, sick, where you went to CVS, you went to Walgreens, and you um, 
bought 38, 48, 58, 68 dollars worth of stuff, and then it still doesn't give you no. Because I'm talking about real sick when you are that sick, and and and, and you have gotten to a point where um, you just won't relieve um, Hezekiah because of these uh, this ailment. Hezekiah is sick, and most of the time when you get that sick, it weighs on you mentally. Right. Let me see if I can help you. Um, there are some people that go around uh, Mother Ray that are sick, and it has nothing to do with their health. Oh, yeah. there, there are some people that go around sick, um, Reverend Griggs, that has nothing to do with their physical bodies, and so a lot of times when you are that sick, it weighs on you mentally. Um, Hezekiah is sick, and we understand that as we read the word that he's dealing with a physical ailment, and it, and it can be weighing down on him because the Bible says that he's so sick. He is near death. That, that's, that's not average sick. That's real sick when he is near death death. And so watch this. I need to help you to understand uh, something. A lot of times when people, um, we think of people being real sick near death. Uh, in my younger years, I always thought about older people, you know. Uh, older people get old and they, and their bodies start wearing down. They get sick almost to the point of death. And let me help you to understand something. Hezekiah is only 39 years old at this point. Hezekiah is a young man. He, he has been um, a king since a, 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 a young, young man. And so now he's 39 years old and Hezekiah is sick uh, almost to the point of death. Uh, and so here it is. Watch this. Some people, um, Keisha, have suffered colds. They, they get a sniffle. They get a cold. Uh, call it, they get, they get, they get, the elbows get to hurt, and, and, and they get to the point where they got Paradise Cemetery on speed dial, but they don't think they ain't gonna make it. How, how you feel? Oh, I don't, child, I don't think I'm gonna make it. And you, you, from little minor stuff, you think that you are almost to the point of death, but he is almost to the point of death, and he's just 39 years old. Right. And watch this. Then to top it off, He's sick. He's just not your average individual. He's the king. And so it lets us know that no matter what your title may be, no matter your pres 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 prestige, that, 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 that calamity can still come knocking at your door. He is the king at 39 years old, and he is sick. He is sick near Death. It has weighed on him physically and it has weighed on him mentally. But to top it all off, if you think that's bad, the prophet, the true prophet, am I in the word, Reverend Griggs? The true prophet, Isaiah, comes to Hezekiah and he speaks a word from the Lord. He says, you need to get your house in order um, because you shall uh, die and not live. Uh, and so here's, the, here's that part that I was telling you about that I've heard um, quartet singers and I heard this and, and, and so many times when you read too fast, you'll miss it. I've heard people say that um, Isaiah came or the word came to Isaiah and told him to get his house in order for this day, this day. You shall surely die. That's not what the word says. I need y'all to go, go with me to the word. Let's look at the word. Let's look at the word. Word of God says, let's look at it verse 1. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Does anybody's Bible say this day? Hmm. It says you shall die and not live. Well, let's, let's, let's go ahead and, you know, because I overthink everything. That's what I'm known for, to overthink everything. Um, 
Would you agree with me, Sister Griggs, that somebody can tell somebody 30 years ago, Sister Florey, get your house in order, because you're going to die and not live. Mm. If Lorraine lived these 60, lived 60 more years, and she died. That statement is still true, isn't it? Because right. eventually, right. she's going to die. And when she dies, she's not going to live. So right. you have to be careful because when people say stuff and you, you take it and run with it, you got to go by what the Word of God Amen. says. When the prophet Isaiah comes to Isaiah, I mean to Hezekiah, and tells him, get your house in order, that ought to be applicable to all of us because yeah. what it is, we don't know when we're leaving here. That's right. Here's the thing. There is no time stamp given to Hezekiah. And so watch this. Deacon Ray, if you went to the doctor, and the doctor told you, Mr. Ray, I need you to start eating better um, because um, don't look good. You're going to die. All right. And he just walks out the room. What do you do? Guess the question is, what do you do first? All right. Let me see if I can help you. Why, why, and that same question would apply to all of y'all. Just think about it. If, if, if somebody tells you that you get your get your stuff in order, go on, get your fast straight uh, because you're gonna die. Mm. My uncle, uh, the original Bishop Bell. My uncle had uh, contracted stomach cancer. And, and, and I, it, it freaked me out because he, he moved in with my mama. And, and I remember the stomach cancer had ate the lining out of his stomach. And, and I remember I was a teenager, might have just gotten to high school, been in high school a couple of years. I used to have to help my mama pack the hole in his stomach. But here's the thing, here's the thing that freaked me out. Carla, the doctor told him that he had six months to live. All right. He lived exactly six months and he died. Exactly six months and he died. So watch this. When somebody tells you that you're going to die, you contract sicknesses. I told y'all before I shared the story with y'all before when when I found out and finally realized that dialysis wasn't a fix all for kidney failure. I always believed all you gotta do is go on dialysis, you'll live forever. Mm -hmm. Until there was a man that sit in the chair when I used to go to the clinic named Mr. Oscar. And I got off work and got there and Mr. Oscar would always be in his chair. He would be starting about 30 minutes before me. Got to, to the to the clinic that day and Mr. Oscar's blanket wasn't there, so I realized that he wasn't taking a trip to the bathroom. And I got hooked up, and after about an hour and a half of me realizing that Mr. Oscar wasn't there, I asked him, where was Mr. Oscar? He said, Mr. Bell, you don't know? Don't know what? Mr. Oscar passed away two days ago. Mm -hmm. God bless you, God bless you. You mean to tell me that this ain't the key to the long life? You can still die on here? Yeah. So what happens? Call the council. Same thing that God brought you out of and took some other folk out of here much earlier. All right. So you mean to tell me that chemo don't fix everything? Mm. So what do you do when it's placed on you that you're going to die? Go ahead and get your stuff in order. What do you do first? Mm. Do I call all of my kids and start making plans? But here it is. Sister Griggs, there's no time stamp given. If I know I got a year, well, I got time to gather my children. I got time to call the lawyers and, and make some plans and then update my will and all of this. But if there's no time stamp given, what do I do first? Do I make sure that my that the insurance policies is going to pay out when I leave here to make sure that my my, my children got something? Do I make sure that the house is taken care of? Does this make sense? 
Because you've been given this and you don't know how much time you have. Lord Jesus. Look at what Hezekiah does. The Bible says Hezekiah turns his face to the wall. Hezekiah has gotten the instructions to get your business straight. Get your house in order because you're going to die and you're not going to live. Because God doesn't know if he's going to die tomorrow. He don't know if he's going to die in two weeks, two months, two years. Hezekiah does not get frantic. He doesn't do anything else but turn to the wall and pray. That ought to be encouragement for us when we're going through the storms of life, we're going through confusion, we're going through heartache. Stop and pray. Why not talk to somebody that, 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 that I've been raised to know is a heart fixer? Because if I'd have got some bad news like Hezekiah's gotten, my heart is hurting. My heart is confused. So why not talk to the heart fixer? Amen. All right. If I'm confused and don't know what to do first, I don't know when I'm leaving. People call me strange. Uh, on the raid some years ago, I think I lost it. I don't know what I did with it. I sat down and I planned out my funeral. I planned it out. Yeah, y'all thinking I'm a real strange. That's how I did. I, had, I picked out a picture and put it on the front. Picked out who I wanted to preach it. Picked out what songs I wanted to sing. Told Lady Bill what casket I wanted to be put in. All that. All right. All right. Strange, maybe. But I planned it. Mm -hmm. And so here it is. He's at a place where he does not know what's next. But the first thing I need to do is I need to talk to the Lord about it. All right. He turns his face to the wall. And look at what he says. He says, he turns his face to the wall. Verse 2. And he prayed to the Lord. And he said, remember now, O Lord, I pray how I have walked before you in truth. And with a loyal heart, and have done what is good in your sight. Mm -hmm. And then he weeps bitterly. Mm -hmm. He prays. You got to know who the one that life and death is in his hands. And then I thought about it when, 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 when Hezekiah prayed. The Bible says that he he he, he prayed the old saints says something like this. When you pray and you pray right. I ain't know what that meant. I ain't know you had to have a right way to pray. But he said when you pray and you pray right, the Lord hears your prayers. And, and that's, look at, what, look at what the word says. I can't give you nothing but what the word says. The Bible says that after he prayed he wept bitterly. Meaning he wept with sincerity. First of all, we got to stop coming to God with an arrogant spirit. Like we're doing God a favor when we come and we work for him and we do for him. God wanted him to get to a point. Sometimes circumstances and situations come along to humble us. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes situations come to humble us that we may come to God with a sincere heart. Here it is. I don't know my outcome. Don't know all. The, I know that this is a true prophet of God in Isaiah. And he speaks on behalf of God. And he told me to get my house in order because I'm going to die and not live. I'm going to turn my face to the wall because and I, I thought, why would he turn his face to the wall? Mm, all right. A lot of times things happen to distract us. Mm -hmm. And I need, I'm in a situation now that I need to focus on yeah. God. All right. 
you ask the question, Bishop, why do you get up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning to meditate? Been doing it probably, what, what, 18 years? Because at that point, the house is quiet. And I can hear from God. Anybody ever seen five heartbeats? Anybody seen five heartbeats? That's how I put my sermons together through the week. My sermons be on the back of load sheets and, and the back of napkins that I didn't wipe my mouth on at lunch because God speaks to me all the time. And I'll write something down, I'll stick it in my back pocket, I'll write something down and stick it in my backpack. And so I got all, I got thoughts all over the place. But on Sunday mornings, around three or four o'clock in the morning, the house is quiet. All right, all right. And now I can put all of those thoughts together. God, you spoke to me Tuesday and you said this. Where is that going to play a part in here? Yeah, you, I, I, I wrote that down, but I don't see how that's going to tie. And he talks to me. And he helps me to put it all together. And then I get up on Sunday mornings and I come to the church. And I sit in the office before everybody gets here. I come in here and I pray for the church. And then he allows me to meditate. All right. And everything comes together. It's almost like uh, Deacon Ray, Big Five comes together with the other five. Mm -hmm. Deuce Trey comes together with Deuce Deuce. Everything starts lining up like it needs to line up. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things that we started about a month ago is the leaders that are here, we go in here and we pray. To make sure everything is on one accord because I understand we've got to be focused. Amen. All right. And so Hezekiah turns his face to the wall and he prays. But watch this. When he prays, now the word of the Lord, verse 4, the word of the Lord comes back to Isaiah. He prays for an extension of life. And some of us pray for various things. Those of us that have been sick, I know one of our prayers have been to get well. Though those of us that have been broke, I'm sure our prayer has been for a financial breakthrough. For those of us that have had storms, whatever the storm may be in our lives, we pray that God pulls us out of the storm. Yes, Lord. Ah, and when he does, here it is. He prays for an extension of life. And here's the prophet. The prophet has heard from God. And God told Isaiah, go back and tell Hezekiah. I heard his prayer. It's in there, verse 4. He says, he says, I've heard his prayer. I've seen his tears. And I'm going to grant him what he asked for. Let me see if I can take it. I told y'all Sunday. Right before I went into the transplant, got ready to go in. It's midnight when I'm getting ready to go into surgery. Chelsea at the time was two or three years old. My prayer. God, bring me out of this. All right. So I want to walk my baby down the aisle. I want to see her grow up. I want to be there for her. That's, that, that was my prayer. Right. And when he brought me out, I thank God. Yeah, yeah. Amen. So here it is. God tells Isaiah, go back to tell Hezekiah. I've heard it. I've seen his tears. I've heard his prayer. And now I'm going to extend his life 15 years. Now watch this. Here's the thing. Look at what he says in verse 8. Watch what God does. He says, watch this. He says, uh, go back up. Verse 5 says, go tell Hezekiah, thus said the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. Surely I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you 
and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria because he had the, the, the land had been under attack from Assyria uh, from the previous king. This previous king, uh, Sherub, had died and his son has taken over, yet they're still in captivity. He said, I'm going to release did you from the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. And this is a sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing which he has spoken to you. Watch what the sign is. And it's a reason to shout. He says, Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial which has gone down with the sun, on the sundial of Ahaz, 10 degrees back. He says, I'm going to take the hand of the sundial and I'm going to turn it 10 degrees backwards so that the sun will return 10 degrees on the dial by which it has gone down. No matter what you're facing in your life, God can change the situation. Now understand this. Watch this. The sundial has gone, has turned and the sun has gone down. When the sun goes down, watch this, it gets dark. All right. I'm in the word, I promise you. He says, what I'm going to do as a sign to show you, he says, I'm going to take the sundial that has turned dark, and I'm going to turn it 10 degrees backwards, and watch this. He said, when I turn it 10 degrees, now watch this, I'm controlling a sundial, but at the same time I'm controlling a sundial, I'm showing you that I'm controlling the weather and the day and night, because he says, when I turn it 10 degrees backward, the sun is going to come back out. Here's the shout. When you get to a point in your life where it seems like you're at a dark place, when you turn your face to the wall and you pray to God, God's got a way of turning that situation around and taking your dark place and bringing light back into your dark place. It's in there. Now watch this. No matter what you're facing in your life, God can change the situation. Now watch this. Understand that it might not be his will to change the situation. Mm. All right. Here it is. Everybody's desire and plan, if we're going through a rough time, we want God to step in and lighten the load. No, I would. All right. Yes, sir. We want God to step in and lighten the load. But watch this. What do you do when it ain't his will to change the situation to light the load? Now you got to have the mindset of that other good song. Lord, don't move my mouth. But give me the strength to climb. Let me see if I can help. Can't give you nothing else but the word. Paul suffered from a thorn in the flesh. Yes. It was his desire that the Lord remove the thorn. It wasn't God's desire to remove it. The thorn was painful. The thorn was uncomfortable. And sometimes we have some things in our life that is uncomfortable. Sometimes we have some things in our life that are painful that we want God to take away and he won't take it. But he gives us the strength to endure. Reverend Griggs can't give you nothing but the word. The word of God says, my grace yes. is sufficient. Meaning when what I'm going through, God's grace is sufficient. It's more than enough to help me survive whatever I'm going through. Yes, sir. Yes, now watch sir. this. I'm done. Hezekiah's prayer was that the Lord extend his life. He turned his face to the wall. God heard his prayer, saw his tears, and granted him 15 more years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, here it is. Hezekiah still died. Yeah. And he still died young. Because Hezekiah was 39 years old when he prayed to God to give him 
long of her life. 39 years old, he only gave her 15 more years. He still died at 54 years old. But God was no short of his word. God did exactly what he was asked to do. And here it is. It all started with a prayer. Yes, Lord. He changed and altered his outcome and it started with a prayer. Here's my last little point. I'm out of here. All right. Out of everything that Job went through, Job lost everything. Tell you all the time when I try to make it a little graphic, I said ten caskets stretched across the church. And he had to go from one casket to the next, looking at his children, mm. laying in those caskets. He lost all of his livestock yes, and animals right. and everything. Then his, his wife tripped out. Mm. His homeboys yeah. sold him out. But watch this. The Bible. The Bible says when he had lost everything, Job kept his integrity. And the Bible says when Job prayed for his friends, don't miss it, God gave him everything back. It's in there. When he prayed for his the same ones that told him he couldn't, he must have did something wrong. Yes, the same ones that sent their mother Ray and stared at him yeah, Lord. when he was at his lowest point in life. The same ones that he couldn't find no encouragement from. Yeah, the yeah. same ones that he, out of frustration, called them some miserable comforters. The Bible said when he forsook all that other stuff, yes. he didn't hold no grudges about all the stuff that he lost. He prayed for his friends. God doubled everything and gave it back to him. Amen. And so here's, 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 here's the blessing. Yes, sir. God can change our outcome. Yes, sir. He can alter your outcome yes, sir. when you pray to him. Yes, it's important that you have an effective prayer life. Yes. Don't just call on him. Yes, when you need something. Mm, no, no. Yeah. Don't just call on it when you need something. No, no. Can you imagine having a relationship and or family members? And some of us got them. I got, I got family members and friends that only call me when they think they can get a plane ticket. Uh, that's, that's a, that's a Chris, I've been trying. Well, I, boy, you, Yo, I've been meaning to call you. And I'm thinking in my mind, okay, here it comes. About two, three more minutes, it's coming. All right. You think you got any buddy passes? I think I don't. <laughs> Y'all know me. I think I don't. You know, and so here it is. Just like you don't want somebody to call you only when they need something. All right. Only when they got their hand out. How do you think God feels when we don't communicate with him until we need something? Well, we'll slide out that bed and get on that floor in a minute. They don't, you don't care about no green alcohol. You don't care about nothing when you need something. Uh, yeah. And we forget to talk to him when everything is fine. Amen. But we look right here at the lesson. When Hezekiah knew nobody else to call on, he turned his face to the wall. To the wall. And God altered his outcome. Yes, sir. That's the lesson. Come on, give God a praise. Amen.